1914. Psalms 1914. Uh, 
uh, believe and understand that by the word of God, the worlds were framed. And Lord, everything that was created was created by our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we just pray that you would help us, Lord, to be a witness for you, Lord, and to stand up uh, in a perverse generation. Lord, to be witnesses for you and to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. Lord, we ask all these things. Forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So here is Agur, the son of Jacob, and he says in verse 2, he says, Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of man, of a man. And uh, I think it's pretty neat. Let's see if I wrote that scripture down. No, that's okay. But, you know, if you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, read there what Paul wrote to the Corinthians about the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, he says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And it is foolishness, amen, to the world. Uh, we, we don't have the understanding. We're... We're foolish, we're, we're brutish, we're, uh, in other words, ignorant or stupid. That word brutish there means uh, stupid. And so to the world, you know, we're stupid. We're ignorant. Uh, we don't know anything, but that's okay. Uh, he says, going on, and he says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Jews seek after wisdom. Uh, everyone's seeking after something to answer uh, the the questions of life and uh, everyone is looking in all the different directions but we know where the truth lies amen, amen. and it lies with God and his son is Jesus Christ amen. <laughs> he says what is his uh, name and, and what is his son's name amen it's the Lord Jehovah and, and Jesus Christ amen. amen so we know uh, in verse 23 but we preach Christ crucified Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Why is it a stumbling block? Because that's not the sign they were looking for. They were looking for a sign, but it wasn't that Jesus would come and be, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, uh, servant and would and would uh, be obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. They were looking for the sign where He would come back and set up an earthly kingdom. And so Jesus is a stumbling block because he did the opposite, amen? It wasn't an earthly kingdom, he said. Uh, uh, it was his uh, heavenly kingdom. And unto the Greeks, it's foolishness. Oh, it's foolishness to believe uh, that God became a man and, and that he died for us and, and uh, he suffered uh, such great uh, suffering and pain for us uh, that we might have life. And so... On the one hand, it's a stumbling block. On the other hand, it's foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world, to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And here's Agur over in Proverbs chapter 30 talking to these people. You know, I, I'm, I'm just a brutish man. I have not the understanding of man. We, we don't need the understanding of man. We need the understanding of God. Amen. Uh, we need to be able to preach the truth of, in righteousness. And you know what? God has chosen the weak things. Jesus said, out of the mouth of babes. Amen. <laughs> out of the mouth of babes. And so, uh, God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God has chosen the, 
uh, base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in His presence. And that's what Agar was doing. He was not glorying in anyone's presence. But he was saying, you know what, I'm not a, a, a very smart man. I am a brutish man. And you know what? Praise the Lord. God can use anybody. Amen? God can use those uh, who might not be the smartest, might not be uh, the wisest as far as this world is concerned. But it's that no flesh should glory in His presence. But of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Jesus Christ is the only wisdom we need. Amen? Amen. He is the wisdom that we need in our lives. He is going to teach us. He is going to instruct us in the way. He is going to give unto us the wisdom that is not of the world, but is of from above. And He has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Jesus is all in all and all we need. Amen? He is all we need that according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. We don't need to glory in what we know and, and glory in, in all the things that we think are smart and witty and, and cunning. No, that's not what uh, God wants to use. Amen. God wants to use those who are base, those who are uh, brutish, those who are foolish, those who are, uh, uh, you know, look as if uh, they are just a normal, uh, run of the mill type of person in this world. That's who God wants to use. Amen. Because He's going to show His glory in a person to be able to speak His righteousness, His wisdom. And confound the wise right. and the things of the world. And so, if all we know is the Word of God, that's all we need to know. Right. Amen? Because in the Word of God, it tells us everything. It tells us all the things that have, has gone on, just as Brother Damon preached last week. That it's it's historical document. Amen? I mean, you can rely on everything it says. That it is true and that it can be backed up, amen, by anything man wants to use. And has been. I mean, everything that it talks about in the Word of God can be, can be and has been many times documented by other uh, things that are, uh, you know, objective. Such as, you know, uh, Archaeology, such as science, such as all these different things, the you know, the geography, all these different things. There's one man named Ron Wyatt, you know, and he, he found a lot of things that the Bible talked about, not by using man's wisdom. In fact, man's wisdom led them all to different places. They didn't even know what the Bible was talking about, but he just used the Bible and he found a lot of things. <laughs> He found the real Mount Sinai. He found the real place that they crossed the Red Sea, which was not even near close where, where the scholars of the day said that it was at. Uh, because they wanted to use all these extra things to find out what God's Word was saying when all you need is God's Word. Amen. You don't need a whole bunch of other things to tell you what God's Word says and, and what it means. All you need is God's Word and the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to have the wisdom of God and be able to confound the wise or God's going to be able to confound the wise through you and to bring to naught things uh, that are not <laughs> or to use things that are not to bring to naught the things that are so that He gets the glory. Not us, but He gets the glory and the praise. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. He says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. I tell you something greater than just knowledge itself. That is charity. Amen? If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. 
But if any man love God, the same is known of him. And that's where it's at. Not just in the things that we know, just as Paul said, you know, I could speak with the tongues of angels and have all faith to remove mountains and do all these great things. If I have charity, it means nothing, right? I mean, love is the key and, and what uh, it's all about. And, and without that love, without that charity, without the love for God, it's all meaningless anyway. What you know or what you don't know, it's all meaningless. You could know everything that the Bible says, but if there's no love for God in your life and, and the love of God in you, then it really doesn't amount to anything. Satan and his angels believe and tremble. But he does not have the love of God for God or for others. And so he is, I mean, empty. I mean, he is totally vain. I mean, he's uh, doing everything he can to destroy as many lives as he can. But in the end, he's going to be destroyed. He's going to be cast into the lake of fire. So, I mean, what, it prof what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So, if any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. Our knowledge, even in the Word of God, does not take away from our dependence upon the Lord. It don't matter what you know, you still need the Lord. Every day. And what you think you know, you don't know anything. Amen? <laughs> I mean, what we... What we I mean, we think we might know a lot, but what we know is not even a fraction of the knowledge that God has. And so we don't need to think that well, just because we know everything or we think we know everything that there is to know or that we know a lot of, the, of what the Bible says, that we're, we're good because we're not. We need the Lord every day. We, need to, we, have, we have to be totally dependent upon Him every moment and to have that love for him uh, to seek after him every moment because it's not in just knowing what the Bible says and what it means it's about that relationship that we have with Jesus Christ because without that it doesn't mean anything 1 Timothy chapter 1 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, he says, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. And there's many of those that want to be teachers, but they have no, uh, <laughs> they have no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ has been broken by their own uh, lust of being uh, someone, you know, of being someone that others look up to, someone that you know, as Jesus said, they love to be called master or rabbi. And they love the most, the uppermost chambers of the, of the feast. Uh, they love for people to look up to them. They love to have that that uh, you know power over the people or feel like they're somebody. When uh, they they have no idea what the Word of God is teaching, and so you know, men like to put people on a pedestal. And especially teachers or preachers, and they like to uplift a certain person. When it's not about the person, it's about uplifting Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not about, you know, learning the mannerisms of some man. It's about learning how to live for God through Jesus Christ. It's about us decreasing and Him increasing. 
And the best teacher, as, the, the, as Jesus said, is going to be a servant among you. It's not going to be someone who just wants a name or a title or, or wants people to look up to him. He's going to be a servant as Jesus was a servant. He came seeking no reputation. He didn't want a reputation. Many times when he healed people, he said, don't go tell any, anybody. They did anyway. But he told them not to just to show that he wasn't looking for uh, uh, some reputation of, of being a healer or whatever. He was the Son of God. If he wanted to, he could have come down and he could have made his kingdom on earth. He could have brought 10,000 angels with him <laughs> and took over. <laughs> I mean, he is God. But he made of himself no reputation. He became a servant. And he became obedient unto death. And so, uh, that's, that's the true, uh, uh, you say proof is in the pudding? Well, that's the proof of a, of a real person who is uh, having that relationship with God. They'll be able to teach. But it's not going to be something that they do for recognition. It's going to be do something because they do for love of people right. and for love of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 18 through 23, he says... Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Forget what you think you know. <laughs> Amen. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written he, that he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Don't look up to a man and, and think more highly of that man than you look up to Jesus Christ and think highly of Jesus Christ. And if you love a man, it's not going to be because of his stature uh, as far as a name or a personality or mannerisms, it's going to be because of His love that He shows for the people. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Amen. So praise the Lord that we don't have to be wise in this world to be used of God. That just as Agur said, I'm a brutish man. I have not the understanding of a man. But yet, we don't need that kind of understanding. We need the Holy Spirit to work in our life. And the word, Holy Spirit's going to work in our life, not because of what we know of what the Word of God says, but because we love the Lord and we want to serve Him. And what we know is so that we can serve Him better yeah. and be uh, a servant for Jesus Christ. Roman, or the next thing he says, Who hath ascended up into heaven? Or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? He asked him a bunch of questions. <laughs> Tell me if you know. You know, it's kind of like, uh, sounds like what Job would, would uh, say to his friends, you know. Tell me. If you have all the answers, let's hear it. You know, the world thinks they have all the answers. Uh, but he said, who hath ascended up into heaven? Who's gone up there and seen what's around? Now, we got telescopes today, and they like to use those telescopes. And, and then, you know, well, we, they're finding new stuff all the time, right? And people think, oh, because we know... Uh, uh, you know, what's going on in our galaxy that we, we've got it all figured out. But we don't even know everything about where we live at. I mean, that, <laughs> we haven't even gotten everything about our own bodies figured out, let alone uh, the whole galaxy and universe that we live in. Right. And he says, Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? 
Who's able to do that? <laughs> do you know anybody? Nope. Amen. Amen. Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who's able to keep water in a garment without it leaking out? Where did water come from anyway? I mean, they like to say that it rained on the earth for millions and millions. Of, where did that rain come from? I mean, it, does rain come from an explosion? I mean, it sounds far-fetched to me. They, they can't even a answer where our oceans come from. Well, it comes from, you know, water in space. Well, where did that come from? I mean, yeah. they don't have any answers. They only have, just as what Brother David says, it's not theories, it's hypothesis. They just come up with these ideas to make it sound like a, a grand idea. When they have no idea. Who, who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is the, his name? What is his son's name, if thou can tell? Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and verses 6 through 10 it says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the, the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, and even in thy mouth. And in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There is only one faith that can save. There is only one faith that can save. And that's faith in Jesus Christ Amen. and His gospel. Right. You have to have faith to believe that the world, the whole universe was created by an explosion billions of years ago. You have to have faith to believe in Muhammad is the prophet of Allah and Allah is the true God. You have to have faith to believe that Buddha is, you know, a uh, prophet, you know, and you have to have faith to believe in Hinduism that, you know, uh, don't eat that cow because that could be grandpa. Okay, I mean, you have to have faith just to believe about anything, right? Yes. But there's only one faith that saves. Now, I could believe that the world began billions of years ago by a big bang and that we're all here by accident but that doesn't save me that doesn't save anybody that believes in that in fact we're doomed because we're just going to die and that's it boy we better figure out how to live forever real quick because I don't want to die and that's it amen yeah. Yeah. and the people who believe in, in, in Muhammad and Allah they, they're not sure if they're saved or not they got to try to do as much as they can and, and just hope that they're good enough. Their faith can't save them. They'll even admit it. Just believing that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah, that doesn't save anybody. You still have to work for heaven. Believing that Buddha is a prophet, his way is the right way, that doesn't save anybody because you still have to find your stuff and go through all these trials. To see if you're even worthy. The only faith that saves right now, today, is the day of salvation, is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the only certainty that's in the world and has ever been in the world. He is the only sure foundation. Amen. I can say I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't even have to worry what comes next today because I have faith in Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. Yeah. And because I believe in Him, I could die right now and I'm okay. Yeah. I don't have to worry about whether I was good enough. All I have to
to know is that I put my faith in Jesus Christ and He saved me by His shed blood Amen. and by His resurrection from the dead. Amen. I mean, that alone should, should you would think, would wake people up to the truth. But yet, we know that the Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And all the other beliefs him haul around the point that I'm a sinner and I can't do anything about it. You see, all the other beliefs say that, oh, I may be flawed, but I can work my way out of it. I can get better by myself. No, the Bible says you must be born again. <laughs> and it's not by the will of man, nor the will of flesh, but the will of God, Amen. which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Psalm chapter 104 and verses... We've got a lot of verses to read, but that's alright. Verses 1 through 24. says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O oh Lord my God, Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers Thyself with light as with a garment? Who stretchest out the heavens like a curtain? Man, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. People say, well, you know, if a star is billions of light years away, how do we see its light if the earth is only 6,000 years old? I mean, it had to travel billions of light years to get here. How do we see it? Because God stretched out the heavens. <laughs> Doesn't mean it was always billions of light years away. Even if it is billions of light years away, I don't even think they really know. But it means God created and then He stretched them out like a curtain. Right. Amen? Yes. I mean, the Bible has the answers. We don't need to go anywhere else. Who layeth the beams of His chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. I love that, who layeth the beams of his chambers in water. Because the Bible tells us that the heavens were separated by water. It says between the first heaven, there was water. The water that was around the earth, above the earth and below the earth, the Bible says in Peter. They're willingly ignorant of that fact. But yet they'll say, well, we, you know, there are some scientists who have said, well, we theorize that there is water beyond our galaxy or beyond what we know as what we can see. And the Bible tells us that. The Bible says that there's a sea of glass that is, is all around heaven, the third heaven where the throne of God is. And so he, he lays his beams of his chambers in waters. He separated the whole thing by waters. If there's three heavens, it was separated by three uh, uh, of water. And so, you know, it also tells us that the way it was, that the flood changed everything. The world that we now know, it wasn't what the world was before the flood. Yes. And that they're willingly ignorant. Yeah. There are signs all around that it's not the same. I mean, they find rainforests frozen in ice in Antarctica. And then they wonder how it happened. Well, yeah, the Bible tells us how it happened. Amen. There was a great flood. <laughs> yes. And it changed the earth big time. I gotta stop stopping because I, I won't get through this if I keep stopping. But I just thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers, his ministers a flaming fire? Who who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. Thou coverest it with the deep. As with a garment. He covered the whole earth with water as a garment. That's what heaven means between waters. I mean, it's the space between the firmaments. 
But yet, I don't know, the world thinks it's wiser than what the Bible says. Always has. Always will. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast found in them. Or for them. Thou hast set a bound that they, gave, they may not pass over. That they turn not again to cover the earth. He gave us his rainbow and he said, I'll never flood the earth again. Yeah. He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink. Uh, and it's funny. And it's not funny. It's just, it's not funny at all. It's funny weird. That God destroyed Adam and, uh, not Adam, Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. And yet the the descendants of Sodom and Gomorrah today want to use the rainbow, which was a promise of God not to destroy the earth with water. <laughs> when he's not going to destroy the earth with water anymore. <laughs> Amen. It's going to be fire again. That it's going to melt with fervent heat. Amen. So, I mean, they, I mean, they, they, it just goes with what the Bible says. He that believeth is not condemned, but he right. that believeth not is condemned already. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watered the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. He, uh, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. You see, when man takes control of what God has done, they ruin it. Yeah. I mean, they take control of God's creation and... and, and you know, God gave them the power to do so, but they're changing it, playing God, and, you know, g genetically modifying all this stuff. And, and we wonder why everybody's sick nowadays, why cancer is so prevalent today. And all the things, you know, I just learned not too long ago that, did y'all know they feed cotton seed to cattle? That's what they do with cotton seed. They feed it to cattle. You didn't know that? No. And we eat the meat. And that stuff is sprayed. I mean, we all know it here living around cotton fields. You smell all that junk they spray on the cotton. Boy, I hope they wash the seed before they feed it to the cows. But there's no wonder we're sick all the time. When man tries to take over what God's done, they, they ruin it. It says in wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine and bread which strengthens uh, strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted where the birds make their nest as for the stork the fir trees are her house. The high hills are for are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth. They gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom thou hast made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Yes, amen. 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 I mean, God has done it all. He, I mean, just as what He says, He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And yet man writes them off and says He does not exist. He's not important. And they think they know it all. But there's coming a day of judgment. And they'll have to wake up. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 
and verses 9 through 16. James chapter 3, 
verse 13. We'll be through. James chapter 3 and verse 13 through 18. He says, Who is a wise man and endowed with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. So we can be a brutish person as not having the understanding or wisdom of man, but we can bring honor and glory to God by being a servant of Jesus Christ and putting and placing our love in Him. Lord, we thank You tonight for Your Word. We just pray that You would use the message tonight in our lives, Lord, that we might, uh, Lord, walk closer to You, Lord, to be able to shine as lights in the world. Lord, understanding that it's not by the wisdom of man, but it is by the wisdom of your word that we are to live. Lord, to, uh, understand that all that we need is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Lord, through him we have all things that we ever need and will need. Lord, we thank you for all things that you have provided for us. Lord, even though we don't deserve it. Forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing. Page 448. Page 448. We'll sing all four verses. The brethren we have met for us. 448.
Page 328, let's all stand. On the last one, Brother Kenny will take the off. Page 328, I want that mountain.
give us your strength. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
verses. Dwelling in Beulah land. 449.